everyone, it's Justin again. Do you have a pet at home? Maybe a dog or a cat or a bunny or a bird or two or three? Well, today we're gonna to be meeting with a veterinarian who works with all sorts of animals with all different kinds of medical needs, from simple checkups to complex surgeries. Maybe you thought about being a veterinarian. What kinds of training and education do you think are required to become one? And just as importantly, what kinds of personality traits do you think would be helpful in being one? Well, we're gonna answer all those questions and more as we dive into what it's like to be a veterinarian. Let's get into it. Today's guest is Dr. Caitlin Roswell. She's a staff veterinarian at the Animal Medical Center in New York City. She works with dogs and cats on a daily basis. Now, you might think that being a veterinarian is just working and being around cute, cuddly, fuzzy animals all day. But you might be surprised as to what it's actually like. There is the misconception that we're just playing with puppies and kittens all day, and uh, that is not the case. Um, you know, yes, we do get puppies and kittens, but um, it's everything in between. Um, you know, we get uh, animals coming in for their annuals. We get uh, older animals that have problems. Um, and, you know, we, we also get animals that are elderly and potentially, you know, reaching the end of their life. Um, and all of that comes with their own unique needs. Uh, as well as uh, kind of their own unique challenges. You can tell by the smile on her face how much Caitlin loves animals, and that's why she chose this career. When I was little, um, I've always wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh, you know, I think I first said that when I was six, when I first learned, um, you know, that what a veterinarian was and what they did. Uh, so it's, it's been something that has been a lifelong, um, passion and, uh, goal. Um, and while there have been a few bumps in the road here and there where I thought about doing something else, ultimately, um, it was the only thing that I could ever see myself doing. In order to become a veterinarian, you're going to need to complete four years of college undergrad and then four years of vet school after that. Part of vet school is putting your learning to the test through real life clinical training. You know, in the, the last two, one to two years of veterinary school, it's, it's really about um, applying what you have learned in the classroom to, um, to actual cases and actual animals. Suppose you want to have a specific focus in animal medicine, like becoming a horse vet. Or maybe you want to be a vet that goes to farms to check up on sheep, cows, and chickens. Or you might even want to be an exotic vet who visits birds, reptiles, and zoo animals. Students will learn about all of these in vet school. And when they go to clinical training, they might focus on one or more of these specific types of animals. As with all medicine, treating and healing sick patients can be incredibly challenging as well as incredibly rewarding. Caitlin goes into detail about some of the personality traits that will be helpful to survive the ups and downs of this career. Perseverance, I think is, is one, a big one. Um, you know, you kind of have to be able to deal with um, a lot of um, kind of stressors. Um, multitasking is a plus. Solid communication skills are so, so important because you can have all the knowledge in the world, um, but unless you can portray the importance of what it is you want to do and why you want to do it, um, you're not really going to be able to, to succeed. Uh, it, it's going to be very frustrating. Um, you know, communication breakdown, I think, is one of the more frustrating things that, that we deal with as a profession. Like she said, communication is important because don't forget, even though vets work with animals, their clients are the pet's owners that are making all the decisions. So even as a vet, you're still gonna be working with people. 
Caitlin suggests doing some volunteer work at a vet hospital, or maybe even a shelter, to see what's really involved in this line of work. The fun and fuzzy parts, as well as the blood, needles, and more challenging aspects. A veterinarian's day can range from a little dull to super hectic, because of course, they're doctors working with living things. Caitlin goes on to talk about some of her favorites and most special patients police working dogs. They're really cool. Um, you know, they are obviously very specially trained uh, and they come in with their, their handlers, which are their, their officer partners. Um, and they are just incredible, incredible dogs. These are the dogs that are sniffing out bombs or, um, you know, weapons or, or all kinds of different things. I mean, they're not pets by any means. They are very much high drive, a little bit, you know, a little bit crazy, uh, but in a good way, you know, it makes them really good at their job. A lot of them don't ever get treats while they're out of the veterinary office. So then they come to the vet and they love coming to the vet because it's the only place they ever get, you know, good cookies and, and can get all the attention they want um, because obviously they, we want them to like coming to see us. So they kind of get a little bit of a special treatment. You know, I've always wondered, given a veterinarian's love for animals, how do they handle the suffering of sick and injured ones? Caitlin explained it in a way that makes me understand it a lot better. As far as kind of balancing animal suffering, you know, with, at the end of the day, that's that's what I'm there to do. I'm, I'm there to relieve suffering. Um, so oftentimes, you know, that, that can actually be one of the more rewarding parts of my job is an animal comes in with a problem um, and they're not feeling well. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm there to fix it. I'm, I'm there to make them feel better. One of the major ways the field of veterinary medicine is changing is how people treat their pets. Most people think of their pets as members of their family, and that could put more pressure on these vets. Yet at the same time, because of this, the pet industry itself is doing quite well. There have been other major changes to the field too. Some doctors have started narrowing their work, specializing in certain fields like surgery, cardiology, or orthopedics. So residencies are required for um, specialization, whether that be surgery or internal medicine or oncology or any of these sort of veterinary specialties um, are gonna require a residency. And residency is very specialized training. Uh, residency is just that particular specialty and almost nothing else. Another potential career path for you could be that of a veterinary technician. Vet techs do a lot of the heavy lifting, so to speak. They're in charge of the hands-on day-to-day work like reading temperatures, wrapping bandages, and restraining animals so that vets can examine them. It does not require the same level of intense schooling as veterinary medicine does. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor, this field is growing fast, and the median average salary for a vet tech is about $40,000 a year, which is much less than that of a veterinarian. And speaking of schooling, an important thing to consider before going into this profession is what kind of college debt you'll be walking out with. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, the median pay for a veterinarian is about $100,000 a year. There were just over 86,000 jobs in 2021, and this profession is growing at a rate of 19%, which is faster than the average for other occupations. However, vet school can be very costly. In fact, most students will end up owing about $190,000 in debt when they graduate. So that's something to carefully consider. It could take you years to pay that off, and you need to be honest with yourself and ask, is that something that sounds doable? Is it difficult but manageable? Or is this just a complete deal breaker? But hey, it's a growing field, and one's love for animals, and as Dr. Caitlin says, the ability to help ease them of their suffering might make any obstacle worth it. Thank you so much, Dr. Caitlin Roswell, for sharing your expertise with us, and thank you for joining us today. See you next time. Hey.